five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So have a timer. Okay, um, my name is Dennis, and uh, you may find me online as a Pixels Commander. And I work in a company called uh, Focus Reactive. Uh, basically, we are a team of React experts and senior developers. If you need to uh, deliver some amazing, sometimes we deliver some amazing lines of codes and call us. Uh, we are React developers on demand. Oh, I started to do computer graphics when I was six. Like, uh, my father bought me a, who knows this? This game, this amazing game. Yeah, that's amazing, that's dizzy. And then I started to play uh, something like that, and I was like, why is the graphics is so weird? And I started to dig, and I dig, okay, that's a graphic system, it's a weird thing. And then I started to write the graphics uh, with BASIC, and then I went further with C++, and then with Delphi and DirectX, and then C Sharp, I was doing uh, security system scats, and then I was doing uh, Flash with 3D, and blah, 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 and then I did uh, Flash JS Engine, which was one of the first HTML5 uh, graphics and games engines. Uh, it's still active and still works. And then I was working for a Virgin Media umbrella company, Virgin Media, to deliver operation system with WebGL and React. And then I was working on uh, 3D games for a company called Evolution Gaming. And now we're going to talk about this one because uh, by some meaning, it might be the most uh, uh, complicated and the most expensive uh, WebGL application by the date. Uh, really, like, I'm, I'm not going to motivate that and tell the whole story, but actually it probably is. So uh, you may you might ping me on the break and I tell you why. So okay, building 3D monstrous large apps with millions of dollars involved and 20, 30, 50 developers is a challenge. And uh, so how 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 it was approached? So um, yes, uh, we used React.js for UA components, but then we used uh, uh, also React to as an ecosystem to drive uh, the development. And Storybook, uh, Storybook could develop, could also show uh, three components, and we use Redux, and a Redux is used because it's official kind of state management, and not only, it also operates actions, and operating actions make sense for games, because you, 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 you can initiate something which is out of a uh, uh, tree structure. And uh, the main point, and uh, unpopular opinion, uh, is going to be further, so the main point is large-scale 3D rendering uh, require, requires componentization and high performance. Oh my god, I'm so quick. Um, yeah, high performance and componentization. So, let's talk about componentization. Mesh. In 3D world, mesh is a like main entity, main unit. You know, everything you see in a game, like button or, or card or a table or I don't know, whatever, it's all a mesh. It's like mesh is a DOM node of a 3D 3D engine, right? And then what we have? We have a Redux mesh. Whoa, Redux Mesh. So what Redux Mesh do? It connects to a store and listens for changes on properties, and then it reacts in some way. But re Redux mesh is not, it basically mimics React component, and it can have parent, it can have children, but it doesn't have a render method because it's not declarative. So the big challenge, so when we've been working for uh, Virgin Media, the, it was a try to build declarative WebGL UI with React. So after some researches, we found that doing this is hard because if you do WebGL, you normally try to run constantly on 60 FPS and something is constantly happening on the screen with a high frame rate. And then every React update, like updating a tree is pricey. So every React update costs you something and it might get some junks on the screen and uh, an unpleasant experience for a user. So in, in this case, we tried to avoid doing declarative 3D components. So 3D components live separately with abstraction kind of React component, and they're connected to UI layer. You know, there is a la UI layer on top of everything, like scores, and uh, uh, yeah, Hall of Fame, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's all connected with Redux store. So 3D lives a bit uh, aside from uh, uh, React, but they're still connected through the store. Oh, uh, it's not popular nowadays. People are like, wow, we can develop, like, put, like, Tech, a component into React 3 and it's going to render wow. I mean, it's wow, but until you get to 10 elements in your game. You know, if you want to scale, if you want many developers working and introducing new features, it's going to be a challenge to maintain declarative 3D. So it's not declarative, but it's way more performant and it's way more flexible, you know, connected to uh, through a Redux. Oh, challenges when do 3D. Uh, any 3D engine sucks in building UI components, and then sometimes you need to apply 
uh, UI components to a 3D point, like now you see these indicators, they're actually React components, HTML React components. So for this, oh, um, I can make it again. So you see, just HTML React components are stick to points in 3D space. Oh, it's actually not that hard to do. There is a HTML mesh we developed, and it sticks uh, to a 3D space, but it lays over uh, in HTML layer, and every frame is being recalculated uh, for its position. Oh, uh, another uh, challenge is performance regressions. Oh, every feature you introduce can drop performance, and this time it might degrade too much, so there should be a continuous FPS benchmarking on uh, pushing something to your repository. So this is uh, something we did. It was uh, fun. And uh, the problem, too good hardware. We as developers are spoiled with amazing laptops, and real users normally doesn't have uh, that good hardware. So uh, we had some really weird bugs, and we even developed a Chrome extension for low-end testing, which drops FPSs, and then you can test uh, yeah, ping me if, if you're interested in, so you can emulate dropped FPS and low FPS. Okay, yes, thank you.